Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of video podcasts coming to you from figuredrawingonline.com. Um, the video podcasts are the short versions of the full lectures that you can um, buy uh, at the figuredrawingonline.com. Um, these lectures consist of anatomy and practical drawing from examples, um, giving you um, handy clues how to construct, how to draw, how to conceive a believable uh, representation of the, of the human form. Uh, this video podcast is on the neck and just very quickly I would like to show you a few, a few of the muscles that, that will uh, define uh, the shape of the neck. Now I'm drawing here uh, a skull just a bit of it. This is the back of the skull, which is called the occipital bone, and this is the side view of the same same skull. We have the we'll have the spine coming down. You will notice this extra bit here. That's the seventh cervical vertebrae, which is always prominent and can be seen uh, if you look at the model. I will kind of indicate it by going a bit wider here with the spine. Now, uh, this bit here is called the mastoid process, and this bit here is the occipital bone. Um, we have a few muscles that, uh, that are um, in, a, in a deeper layers, and one of them is uh, semispinalis capitis, which uh, lies somewhere there. And this will be very, very schematic, so I'm not going to even delve into where it's where the muscle originates and where it is where it is attached. You just need to roughly roughly know in this short episode. Um, and then we have the longissimus capitis, which uh, on the side view uh, comes from the mastoid process and it comes down somewhere there. It looks something something like that. Uh, now, in the in the back view, the longissimus capitis will be just here from the mastoid process, just on the side like that, like such. Now, also covering these, we have the splenius capitis. I'll just change pencils. We have the splenius capitis, which in the side view uh, looks pretty much like uh, covering all this. The splenius capitis, and next to it will be the splenius cervicis, just there. And in the back view, these two muscles uh, uh, would look pretty much coming halfway there, and then about there. And this one here is the splenius capitis, and then the splenius cervicis will just poke through from underneath the splenius cervicis. Now, more importantly, what, what we have also in the front and, and on the side is the sternocleidomastoid. For that, I will change paper. The sternocleidomastoid, uh, I'll just put in a In the side view, here would be somewhere there, there's the jawline, uh, and that's the mastoid process occipital bone. Now, the way we have the neck, uh, the sternocleidomastoid originates from uh, from the mastoid process and spirals down actually it's, it's in reverse it's inserted in the mastoid process originates from the clavicle and the sternum in the front and spirals down like that now we have all these other muscles in the back that we just talked about and also on the on the surface we have the trapezius that that also crawls over to the front and is inserted in, into the clavicle. In the front here we have the mylohyoid which overlaps the Adam's apple which overlaps the windpipe. So that's that's pretty much 
in a very very brief description the muscles that you need to know in the front uh, sorry in the neck in order to to render it so if I um, if I am to to draw um, I will just make a drawing of I will just make a drawing to to demonstrate what I what I have in mind so fairly quickly I put in the the face which I'm not worried much about in terms of uh, facial features or, or some sort of accurate rendering of of their position. Uh, I'm more concerned about uh, about the neck at this stage. So uh, there's a, there's an important construction line that is good to remember and that is uh, the the bottom of the nose the bottom of the ear and the occipital bone roughly lie on the same on the same level so when you need to when you need to put in an ear uh, in, a, in a head that is that is tilted in perspective and you can't actually imagine where things should be that's a good rule to remember so this guy here is kind of has a head lifted and and has all this kind of turned away from from the light but more importantly uh, we have a very nice definition here of the mylohyoid and the adam's apple and then the windpipe. However, all of this is really kind of boxed in in a, in a V shape by the sternocleidomastoid that originates uh, from the clavicle here and spirals up to the mastoid process just behind the ear. Deltoid Oste and the arm spiraling down and, and in the back all this comes to clavic uh, to uh, the scapula in the back and so on and so on. So these are this is the important part to remember here. There's the sternocleidomastoid spiraling down, which is inserted into the clavicle part of the sternum, and then from the side here of course we have the the, the, we have the, uh, the trapezius that helps us to, to define these shapes here in the back. All right, so so that's that's about it in a in a quick kind of a description of the neck and the few muscles. Uh, Like I said, the construction line where, where the, the, the ear, bottom of the ear, the occipital bone, the bottom of the skull in the back and the nose uh, are on, will help you if you, if you try to render, render a face in, in perspective. And uh, that's the nose there, there's a mouth underneath and a chin. Let's say something like that, and you need to put in, you need to put in the uh, the ear, and it's it's would be quite hard to find it. However, we know that in this in this cylindrical shape, uh, we can just run the line and find where the bottom of the nose would come to the side, and that's where the that's where the ear would be.
so that's the that's the construction line that you need to uh, remember if you if you're drawing the the skull in in perspective and and you have difficulties to find the point at which at which uh, where you should place you should place the ear the mastoid is coming down and the trapezius coming on the side there. So that's just a very quick one and if you want more information and you want a full, full lecture on the neck you need to visit figuredrawingonline.com and purchase the lecture on the neck. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you with the next one which will be on the skull. See you then.